tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Let's get started with animation. Hello folks, today we won't build a scene from scratch, but I'll show you something which might inspire you to do similar things. This uh, is a set of arrows, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and uh, there are particles at the end of each arrow. When I run the simulation here, the particles, we have more particles spreading out from the tip of the arrow. The, the trick behind this is um, very simple, but you need to get acquainted a little bit with Bifrost Graph. This is the graph which does this whole thing. We have a small cube. Uh, well, you didn't see the cube. Okay, let's unhide this cube. This is the small one, this is the red one, and let's unhide the blue one. So you can already see that um, the arrows go from the small one to the big one. And uh, they are rotated uh, quite a bit because the rotation of the big one is different from the rotation of the other one. And I scaled, this is just a keyframe animation, I scaled the size of the large uh, cube up and down. Actually it might be, let me have a look, Oh, it's a, a set of expressions here. Uh, doesn't matter, you can do it with keyframes as well. So the large cube is being animated, that's why the arrows move. We see the particles develop here. Now I go to the Bifrost Graph Editor again, and I go to the source particles. Just don't worry about the whole set uh, of uh, nodes here. We just uh, have a look at the source particles. That's basically the how the particles are being created. You have a, a speed of the creation. And by the way, with the uh, Bifrost graph version, which was released in August 2021, you can now have, you see these arrows here. And you can middle mouse drag the arrows and um, change the values here. R very nice, rather than typing in uh, values which we do now. I ch type in seven. Let's have a have a look what is changing. Not very much, and that is because the particles die pretty soon. That's uh, further down. The age limit is zero. Let's raise this to two. That means two seconds. And now. Uh, it's not in real time anymore, but you see that we have a two second lifespan for the particles. You can actually do it with the left mouse button. Very nice. What an improvement here. It looks as if the arrows were expelling the particles, but they don't. Want to see this rendered? It's not too bad. And of course, this is a key thing in computer animation. You often hide things. So we hide the two cubes again and we render it again. Quite nice. Now let's have a look at the graph which does this. First of all we have the small cube and the small cube has, is a mesh. It's a polygon mesh. Uh, we feed the mesh geometry into the geometry input of a get point position node. GPP abbreviated if you want to create one yourself. And in a previous tutorial I showed you how to use the, actually several tutorials when we sometimes we need to get the positions of this mesh and we need this in our case because uh, we need to fit it, uh, fill in uh, vectors right here in the start position and in the end position of the create arrow strands. So the small cube hands over the point position of all the points on that cube, that's eight points basically, and hands the get point position node hand it, hands it over to the create arrows strands and from the strands we have an output which goes to the input of the output here and creates strands. So when we disconnect this part here we only see the part we just talked about. The particles are not there. So this is the, and the rotation comes from the rotating big cube. 
Now let's hook this up again and disconnect this part. What do we see now? No arrows, but particles. How does this node work? Well, uh, we can forget about these parts here and this part, but we need to concentrate on this set of things. Well, the big cube is the one which rotates, feeds its mesh into a source particles node. We don't need a get point position node for this input here because it wants geometry, it wants a mesh, it doesn't want vertices. And from there it goes into a simulation of particles, the simulate particles node, into the sources input, the particle source into the sources input. And from there it goes out as particles into our final output as particles. And uh, here I have the particle solver settings, which are not necessary really, but uh, which give you much more influence about the particles, for example about the gravity, which I set to 0 0.1, which means basically it's very, very little. An important thing to link these two processes, the top one, which creates the arrows, and the bottom one, which creates the particles, is this connection here. This connection, the big cube, does not only create particles from the corners of the, of the cube, but also it hands over the position of the vertices, that's what the get point position node does, and hands it over to the end positions. That means we have the arrows going from the small cube to the big cube. This is this connection here. And apart from that, the big cube creates at the edges, at the, at, at the corner of the cube, it creates particles. That's basically all there is. What will change now is this rate mode. We currently have set it to count per point. Let us have a look. Actually, let's reactivate the arrows strands into strands. Now we have uh, both simulations working at the same time. Uh, we have a count per point and uh, when we change this from count to point to count this is what we get. So it's just about how many we have per time. That's where the particles are more or less positioned. That's what we get when we use the count as rate mode. And guess what will happen when we use the density? We have the density of the whole cube. Which makes the simulation very slow. We're still at frame 13, 14, 15 because we have a mass of particles in the scene. Falling just marginally down. So this is not what we are interested in. We want to have the count per point. Uh, basically what I'm telling you here is use the options. They have drastic effect. When you raise the normal speed things might get a little bit out of hand but of course this is interesting too. Final rendering. Do your experiments with Bifrost Graph with the editor. It's a powerful and so fancy tool. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.